Hello everyone! Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. Today I have a new tutorial to share with you and this is to celebrate my 100k subscribers on YouTube. Thank you all so much for being here. So today I'm gonna show you how to make these cute tiny mini rainbow bees. You can use any type of yarn for this project. Here I used a uh, number six weight yarn with a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook. But like I said, you can use any of your choice. And I have also made six different color combos that I'm gonna list in the description down below if you want the exact same color. So make sure to check that out. For this project, you're gonna need some yellow yarn. You only need a few grams. So this is a really fun project to use your leftover yarns if you have any. So yellow yarn, you're gonna need some green, blue, purple, pink, and peach or orange, and also some white. Um, you can find, like I said, all the details for the yarn and colors I used in the description down below. You will also need some polyester stuffing, a pair of scissors. You're also gonna need a hook. I'm using a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook for this yarn. If you're using a different yarn, make sure to use the right size for the yarn you're using. For this specific octopus hook, I put the link in the description down below if you want one as well. You're also going to need a yarn needle, a stitch marker. You can use a bobby pin or any other little marker to mark your rounds. And also a pair of 12 millimeter safety eyes. And you can find my favorite safety eyes in the description down below as well. Okay, so let's start this mini bee. You're going to need your crochet hook and your yellow yarn. And we're going to start the easiest way, which is chain two to start in rounds. If you know how to do the magic circle, you can go ahead and make it and make eight single crochet stitches in that circle. If you don't know how to do it, you can learn it from me at, with my video tutorial right here. Otherwise, you can just follow along and I'm going to show you the chain two uh, technique to start in round. So you're going to start by making a slip knot. You can do it the way you want. So start and make your slip knot. And then we're going to chain two. So it's a chain. You're going to yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. And now you have two chains. Then we're going to work our eight single crochet stitches into that second uh, chain from the hook. So I'm going to insert my hook there. And then for all my crochet toys, I like to do the yarn under and over for my single crochet stitches. This will give us tighter stitches and also a, a slightly different look from the yarn over over. So pretty simple. You can still do the yarn over over if it's easier for you. Uh, but just so you know, so to yarn under over, you're going to start by yarning under. So the yarn goes under your hook and then you pull it through. And then once you have two loops on your hook, you're going to yarn over. So the yarn is over your hook and then you pull it through. And this is one single crochet stitch. We want a total of eight for the first round. So I'm going to go back into that same chain and then make a second single crochet stitch. And a third and four and at this point I like to just give it a little tug here for my slip knot just to make sure that the hole is not too big and then I'm gonna work four more so like I said we want a total of eight so you can work your eight and then we're gonna start round two Okay, I have my eight single crochet stitches right here. I'm gonna pull on my tail a little bit more to close the opening right here. So this is round one. If you're not sure if you have your eight stitches, I like to count from the end just so you don't count the loop here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And I know that I'm gonna have to insert my hook into this stitch here for the next round. Let's start round two. You're going to insert your hook into the next stitch and work a single crochet stitch. Here you will need to put your stitch marker. So I always like to mark the first stitch of my rounds with the stitch marker. And then for round two, we're going to work an increase in each stitch. So to work an increase, you're basically just making two single crochet stitches in the same spot. So I'm going 
I'm going back into that same first stitch and I'm gonna work another single crochet stitch. So here I have my first increase, which is two single crochet stitches together. Then going into the next stitch, we're gonna work an increase again. And you just repeat that around. There we are, round two is finished with 16 stitches around and we reached the stitch marker. I'm gonna remove my stitch marker and then I'm gonna work a single crochet stitch into that first stitch, place the stitch marker again. And in round three will be seven single crochet stitch and then an increase in the eighth stitch and then repeat that another time so we're gonna do seven single crochet stitches i've made one two so you're always going into the next stitch three four five six and seven and then in the next stitch i'm gonna increase so i'm gonna place two single crochet stitches there and then we repeat that, so seven single crochet stitches and then an increase. Okay, round three is done and you should have a total of 18 stitches around. Now for round four, we're gonna make one single crochet stitch in each stitch around. So I'm making my first one, putting my stitch marker back. And like I said, we're gonna keep the same number of stitches. So you're just making one single crochet stitch in each stitch. And for the last stitch of round four, you don't wanna finish that stitch because we're gonna make a color change. So basically what I did for the last stitch, I inserted my hook, yarn under, pull through, and stop when you have two loops on your hook and we're gonna change for uh, the green yarn. And here, if you want, you can already cut your yellow yarn. So I'm gonna cut it right now so I have less <laughs> tails inside my bee. Now with the green yarn, I'm gonna place it on the hook just like this and pull it through. That completes the last stitch of round four. I'm gonna remove the stitch marker. And then to make a seamless, so it's not, uh, it's not invisible, but it's a little better than the regular color change. So it's gonna look like this once you're done. So you see here, the color changes are here, but don't worry because we're gonna put the wings on top of it right there. So to make that seamless color change, I'm gonna slip stitch into the back loop of the next stitch. So I'm going into the next stitch and I'm finding the back loop. So when I say back loop, you always have two you always have two loops to insert your hook in. This is the front loop, the closest to you, and then the one behind is the back loop. So we're going to insert our hook into the back loop and slip stitch. Okay? This is going to be loose. It's okay. We're going to work in that stitch later. If you want, you can put your stitch marker, but for me it's pretty easy to know where the round starts. Then for the rest of the round, you're going to do single crochet stitches into both loops and you just want to make one single crochet stitch in each stitch around for still a total of 18 stitches. And don't worry, yes, the first stitch is a slip stitch. Okay, making the last stitch. Stop when you have two loops on your hook and then switch for blue color. Place the blue yarn on your hook and pull through. Now into the back loop of the slip stitch, you're gonna work a blue slip stitch. And then you just repeat in blue. So one single crochet stitch in each stitch around. You can also cut your green yarn. I like to leave about, I don't know, four inches, just enough to tie two knots later on. Here at the last stitch in blue, we're gonna change for purple. 
So same way, place your yarn on the hook and pull through. And then you're just gonna repeat the same. So a slip stitch in the back loop and then single crochet stitch in each stitch around. And you can cut your blue yarn just like you did for the green. Last stitch of purple, you're gonna stop here because we wanna change for pink. Place pink yarn on your hook and pull through. Slip stitch into the back loop of the purple and then single crochet around. Stop here at the last stitch of pink and we're gonna use our last color which is peach or orange place the orange yarn on your hook and pull through slip stitch into the back loop of the pink and single crochet around and don't forget to cut your pink yarn And a last stitch of orange, I'm gonna switch back to yellow yarn, place it on the hook, pull through, and then make one slip stitch into the back loop. And then just one more single crochet stitch. We're gonna stop here to tie our knots and also to put the eyes in. Okay, so at this point, our bee looks like this. So we have the color changes here. Now I'm going to flip my bee. The tail from the beginning, we're not going to do anything with it. And then all the other ones, I'm going to take two at a time and then just tie two knots. I like to gently pull on the tails before tying my knots. And then I just take two, tie two knots, and then I'm going to go to the next set of tails. So I'm taking this one here, pulling gently. This one here, pulling gently and tying two knots. Do that for all the tails. For the last set of tails with the yellow one, don't pull too tight on it, otherwise you won't be able to work back into that slip stitch. So just pull on the orange and then tie your two knots like this. And then you can flip it back so you see the right side of the stitches. And now we're going to secure the eyes. So you're going to need both eyes. So I'm using these cute green eyes today. You can check the description down below if you want to buy some cute colored safety eyes as well. So we're going to place them between rounds two and three. So to count your rounds, you have the circle here at the beginning of it. And then this is your round two. So we're going to place them between rounds two and three. And you want to make sure that the color changes are at the top of your bee because we're going to put the wings there. So I'm going to place the first eye and I'm just going between rounds two and three, like I said, and making sure that the color changes are at the top. And then I'm going to place another eye between rounds two and three. I just randomly put them and then I look if the color changes are at the top of the head or at the top of the bee. It looks pretty good to me. I think they're a little bit to the left because I'm going to put the wings here. So I'm just going to lower them one stitch on this side and then up one stitch on that side. And I think, yeah, this is more centered. Now I'm going to put the, the washers at the back. And there we go. Now we're going to keep working with the yellow yarn. So like you did for all the colors, you're just going to work one single crochet stitch in each stitch around. For next round, I'm going to do a single crochet stitch into that slip stitch. I'm using both loops here. So single crochet stitch, put your um, stitch marker again. 
and then we're gonna decrease in the next stitch. To do a decrease, I'm using the invisible decrease technique. And to do that, we're gonna need the front loops of the next two stitches. So I'm gonna insert my hook into the front loop only of the next stitch, and then into the front loop only of the next stitch again, just like this. So now you have your working loop on the hook and the two, and the two front loops from the, the stitches. Then yarn under, pull through, yarn over, pull through. So this was one decrease. And you wanna repeat that around. So one single crochet stitch, one decrease. So I'm gonna do another set with you. So in the next stitch, both loops, I'm gonna single crochet stitch. And then using the next two front loops, we're gonna decrease. So front loop, front loop, yarn under, pull through, yarn over, pull through. So this was another decrease. So this round is done. I have a total of 12 stitches around. If uh, you're using the same yarn as I am, you can just keep working on your bee. If you're using a thinner yarn and the hole is really small here, start stuffing your bee right now. For us, we're gonna stuff afterwards. So for the last round, we're just gonna repeat what we just did. So one single crochet stitch, one decrease for a total of four times. And that's gonna give you eight stitches. Here I'm done with the last round. So I'm gonna cut the yarn and leave a tail of about 12 inches, I wanna say. And then you can put and then you can pull the yarn out. And now your bee looks like this. Here we're gonna stuff, so make sure that you break the fiber before you're using it. And then we just stuff it. Make sure that your bee is in an oval shape so it's not round. It's really oval and then you can Put on, push on the little face to make sure it's really flat. And then I like to roll it in my hands just to make sure that it's all even. Like this. And then I'm gonna add more stuff in just before closing it. Here you're gonna need your yarn needle. If you don't have one, you can also do that with your crochet hook, but it's easier for me and quicker with my yarn needle. So to close it, you're gonna use the front loops of the next stitches. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna go into the next front loop from the outside of the bee going in, just like this, and then pull through. And then for the next front loop, you're gonna go from the inside going out. So that's two stitches. And then I like to do two or four at a time. So that's two like this. And then don't pull, don't pull right away because we're going to add stuffing. So I'm done with my eight stitches and then I just poke the bee with the needle and then I'm going to add more stuffing right here. And you want to make sure that it's pretty, um, pretty hard to be because it's going to loosen up with time. So if it's really, really squishy already, it's going to be really, really uh, loose with time. And here I just like to push the stuffing right in the yellow rounds just to make sure that the back is not too flat so it's still round here because if you don't add stuffing there it's gonna be really flat. And then shape it again make sure all is good and then you can hold the yarn like the last stitch here and just pull on the yarn tail and you're gonna see that it's closing. Be gentle with the yarn so you don't snap it. And now it looks like this. If there's still a little opening, you can go underneath a few loops around the closing area. Just like this to secure it. You can make a knot if you prefer. I don't really mind it with that yarn. And then I just go back into the middle and then out in the B somewhere. Like this. And then I'm gonna go back into that same stitch and go elsewhere in the body, in the B. And then again, I do that like, I do this 
three or four times. So I'm going to make one more. And then here I'm going to cut the yarn. And remove this little bit of yarn. Okay, so our bee is done. Just missing the wings now. And it looks like this. Now for the wings, you're gonna need to do two of them. So you can start with a magic ring or with the chain two, like I showed at the beginning of the video. You can go back if you don't remember it. So this time we're gonna do seven single crochet stitch in the magic ring or in the chain two. Okay, here I have my seven single crochet stitches in my magic circle. And for the last round of V, we're gonna work an increase in each stitch around. So increase, 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 increase for a total of 14 stitches around. So I'm just going into the first stitch that we made and then making two single crochet stitches together and repeat that around for a total of 14 stitches. Once you have your 14 stitches around, it should, look, it should look like this. And then I'm gonna go into the next stitch and I'm gonna slip stitch just to fasten off. And then for the first wing, you just wanna leave a short yarn tail. So just about this length here. I wanna say six inches maybe, not more because we're not gonna use it to sew it. So this is my first wing. And then repeat the exact same thing for the other wing. But for this one, make sure that you leave a long yarn tail of about 12 inches or even a little bit more. So if you have your two wings, you're gonna thread the needles. You're gonna take the other wing and just place them like this. I'm holding both in the same hand. And then I'm just gonna go a few stitches away from the slip stitch and then insert the needle from underneath going up in the other wing. So now they are attached together. And then we're gonna go into the next stitch through both wings like this and pull through. So we're just doing using the whip stitch here, pull. And then I'm gonna do one or two more. So going into the next stitch and here is my slip stitch. No worries. And then I just like to go back into that other wing to be ready to sew it on the B, like this. Now our two wings are attached. Now taking your B, we're gonna place it, we're gonna place the wings on top of it. So the yarn tail that you're gonna use to sew, I want them to be closer to the eyes. And then I just place them like this, holding them with one finger right here and then making sure that the other tails are not so much in the way and I just make sure that it's um, in the middle of centered with the eyes and like this and it's really on top of the colors of the rainbow like this and here if you want you can use a little pin to secure that in place I usually don't use one just because I'm holding the wings with my thumb and it's only for a few stitches now you're gonna insert the needle inside the bee and you're gonna insert it between the, I'm gonna try and show you, between the first two colors, so between the green and the blue. All right, I'm gonna go, so my tail is a little bit more on this side. I'm gonna go right here like this. It doesn't have to be perfect, so just take a stitch of the bee and then I'm gonna go right through one wing, okay? like this and pull through. Then you wanna make sure that your wings are still centered. Now I'm gonna go inside like the other side of the wing. So I'm on one side here and then I'm gonna go on the other side. And then into the body, you don't need to see where you're going. You just need to take, like you're gonna feel it with your needle. So take a stitch in the B and then push the needle out on this side, like this, and then again going on the other side of the wings, and then in the B, push it out, just in the B. And here, make sure that the wings are still centered. 
Okay, it looks good to me. And here I just like to finish it going, like taking a stitch here at the end of the wing. And then going back into the B and then out a few stitches away because we're going to tie a knot with that tail. Okay, so it looks like this. Now to secure everything, I'm going to use the other tail that is from the wing at the front. And then I'm going to insert it inside the B as close as possible to where the tail is. And then out through the same stitch as the other white tail. Like this. And then I'm going to use them just later on. I, I'm going to show you what to do with the these little two tails here from the first round of the wings. So you have two options. If you want, you can bring the tail right inside the B and then out. And this is going to bring the, the wings down. Otherwise, you're just going to weave in the tail inside the wing, like taking just like two little loops here like this, and then right, right into the body. And then I'm going to bring them probably at the back again, just in case we see it later. So just here at the back through a stitch. Don't pull too tight. You don't want to change the, sh the shape of the wing. Just so just put, pull, pull on it. This way here, the wing is going to go a little down, but not too much. And then repeat the other side. So I'm just taking two little loops. Oh, this one here is, is loose. So I'm, I'm just going to take it like this. And I'm going to bring it down. That's a little tip. And then in the B and out through the same stitch as the other tail. Here. Make sure that here is looking good. Yeah. Okay. And now with the tails, you're going to tie two knots. And then you have two options. You can um, put them back inside the body with your needle or what I like to do because it's quicker. I just cut them a little shorter. And then I'm using my scissors to push on the knot and hide the tails. So you want to make sure that everything is in. And then with your scissors or your needle, you can just shape it. And you're all done. Look at this. Such a cute bee. And I'm also going to show you how to add cheeks if you want. And a little tip here. For your leftover white yarn from the wings, I like to keep them and use them to stuff my next bees. <laughs> so I'm saving on the stuffing. So for the cheeks, you can use any pink color that you want. I'm going to use the same as I use for the bee. So just cut, I don't know, a fifth, probably 20 inches or so, something like this. For the cheeks, and you can just use also regular worsted weight yarn for that if you prefer. And I'm going to insert the needle at the bottom of the bee and then out just in, underneath the eye like this. And pull and leave a tail out at the bottom because we're going to use that to tie two knots. <laughs> and now I'm looking at my bee and I'm figuring out if I want a small cheek like this or if I want it to be like longer but I like the small short cheeks. So I'm just going one stitch away from the initial point. And then I'm going to go back into that, in that first point here, just like this, because I want the cheek to be a little thicker than just one strand. So this is one strand and I'm going to make another one here. And then I'm going to go right in underneath the other eye to make the other cheek. Like this. That's one cheek. And then same on the other side. So one stitch away, one strand, and then going back at the bottom right here. And then you're going to tie two knots. And 
And there you go, your little bee is all done. I hope you liked the tutorial. Make sure to subscribe to my channel, that means a lot to me. And don't forget to follow me on my other social medias as well. I'm on Instagram, TikTok, Patreon, Facebook. I'm basically everywhere. So just make sure that you follow me there. If you like my work, thank you and see you soon. Bye.